In this video, we're going to continue talking about completing the square. And we're going to do some examples that are slightly more difficult than the ones we did in the first video. So let's revise our goal here. Now, the most general form of a quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. And this is called the standard form of a quadratic equation. Okay, because this form, um, based on different techniques, gives us a lot of information about the equation. Now, so one of the examples here, uh, we're going to look at uh, an equation that's written in standard form that looks like 3x squared plus 5x minus 6 equals 0. And as before, we're going to do some algebra and transform this into a perfect square on the left side, x plus some quantity squared equals a number. Okay. The difference between this example and the ones we did in the other video is this part where we have a coefficient other than 1. Okay, in this case, it's 3. And the next example we're going to look at is going to be uh, a quadratic equation that's written in non-standard form, which looks like parentheses or two times the quantity x minus 6 times x plus 1 is equal to 2x minus 8. Okay. So again, the goal is going to be to reduce this to a form that matches. This is going to end up looking like x minus some quantity squared is equal to a number. Okay. So again, we're going to talk about this process um, of completing the square in these scenarios. And let's review the goal, the ideas. The idea is if we can make the left-hand side look like x squared plus bx equals a number, or x squared minus bx equals a number, then by adding the special quantity on both sides, we can turn the left-hand side into a perfect square in both cases. Okay. But notice that in both of the starting points, the coefficient of x squared is 1 for both of them. And so uh, we're going to have to take that extra step to make sure we have that before we figure out the quantity to add on both sides. Okay, so let's go ahead and take uh, the first example and solve an equation that's given in standard form. So here we have 3x squared minus 5x minus 6 equals 0, or rather plus 5x minus 6 equals 0. Okay. So we have two things here. We have a trinomial on the left, where we just want a, we want a binomial on the left. And we have a coefficient of x squared that's different than 1. So we're going to take care of both of these uh, one at a time. So first, let's add 6 to both sides. OK. So we add 6 to both sides. On the left-hand side, we have 3x squared plus 5x is equal to 6. OK. And now the next thing we want to do is we would like to make the coefficient of x squared 1 so we can divide both sides by 3 or multiply both sides by 1 third. Okay, so we're going to divide each term on the left by 3 and 6 by 3 as well. And so now that gives us x squared plus 5 over 3x is equal to 2. Okay. So let's see where we're at. On the left side, we have a binomial that looks like the left-hand side of this piece over here. And the right-hand side is a number. So great. So we're ready to figure out that special quantity to add to both sides. Okay, so let's write down what b is. In our case, in this case, b is 5 thirds. And we need to take half of b. Now, half of b is the same as half times b, which is 5 sixths. And we're going to add the square of this quantity. So half b squared is the square of 5 sixths. Okay. 
to both sides. So this is the special number that we need to add to both sides. So let's continue here. We have x squared plus 5 thirds x plus the quantity 5 sixths squared. So 2 plus 5 sixths squared on the right side. Okay. So, and then finally, according to this idea here, the left side is actually going to be a perfect square. That's x plus half of b, which in this case is 5 sixths. x plus 5 sixths, the quantity squared, equals, and then let's do the arithmetic here real quick. Um, 5 sixths squared is, of course, 25 over 36. And 2 can be written as 72 over 36 by getting a common denominator. And the sum of those gives us 97 all over 36. Great. So let's see, where are we at right now? On the left side, we have a perfect square. On the right side, we have a number. And so now we could use the square root principle to reduce this to x plus 5 sixths is equal to plus or minus the square root of 97 over 36. Okay, and that of course gives us x plus 5 over 6 is equal to plus or minus square root of 97 all over 6. Okay. And as before, we can subtract 5 sixths from both sides to get x equals negative 5 sixths plus or minus the square root of 97 over 6. And for that reason, the solution set contains those two numbers, 5 sixths minus square root 97 over 6, comma, 5 sixths plus the square root 97 over 6. Okay. And as before, we can graph these two numbers on a number line. Let's look at the next example. So in this next example, the equation is given in non-standard form because we have this quantity on the left, which is a product. Uh, now, if, if the right-hand side were zero, that would be great because we could use the zero product property, but in this case, it isn't. And so we're going to have to change this to a form that looks like a binomial on the left with these specifications and C on the right. So, okay, let's go ahead and expand that. And we're going to do that over here. So this is going to be two times, um, we're going to use the distributive property here, x minus six times x plus x minus six times one. And so again, using the distributive property, we have x squared minus six x plus x minus six. And we can actually combine like terms to get two times the quantity x squared minus five x minus six. And again, using the distributive property, two x squared minus 10 x minus 12. Okay. So this is the quantity we have on the left side. So let's rewrite this equation to get 2x squared minus 10x minus 12 is equal to 2x minus 8. Okay, so we're, we're one step closer here because we have expanded both sides. Uh, well, the right side was already expanded, but okay. So now let's make sure the left-hand side looks closer, closer to this, which is a a binomial with an x squared term and an x term. So to that end, let's um, add 12 on both sides because we don't want a constant term. Okay, but furthermore, we want our right side to just be a number, so no x terms. So to that end, let's take away 2x from both sides. And let's see where we end up. So now, the left-hand side becomes 2x squared minus 12x, and the right-hand side will be that 2x minus 2x cancel, negative 8 plus 12 is 4. Okay, so great. So the left-hand side is a binomial of two terms, an x squared term and an x term, 
the right hand side is a number, so we're on the right track. Now the next thing we need to do is we want to make sure that the coefficient of x squared is 1. So we can divide both sides by 2. So we can divide the first term by 2, the second term by 2, and the right hand side by 2. And so that gives x squared minus 6x is equal to 2. Perfect. So now what we have here is we have um, a binomial on the left side that looks like what we have here, x squared minus bx equals c, and we have a number on the right side. Okay, so let's figure out that special number that we need to add to both sides. So let's make some room here. Okay, so in this case, we have b is 6, f of b is 3, and the number we will add to both sides is half of b squared. So in other words, we want to add 3 squared to both sides. So when we do that, we have x squared minus 6x plus 3 squared equals 2 plus 3 squared. Okay, so at this point, we can factor the left side into a perfect square, parentheses x minus half of b, which is 3, the quantity squared equals, and the right-hand side is 2 plus 9, which is 11. And now we could use the square root principle and rewrite this as x minus 3 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 11, which gives x equals 3 plus or minus the square root of 11. And so our solution set contains those two numbers, the first number being 3 plus square root of 11, and the second number 3 minus square root of 11. Okay? And as before, we can graph this on a number line. So the number to the left is 3 minus square root of 11, and the number on the right is 3 plus square root of 11. We can mark those numbers in. 